in last lecture we have discussed about computer memory we have discussed about types of memory and definition of computer memory that were main memory and secondary memory we have defined them and secondly we have discussed important characteristics of computer memory which involved access mode access time data transfer rate capacity and cost of computer memory i have told you the types of access mode that were include sequential access mode and random access mode and i have told you about all these factors thirdly we have discussed memory terminologies that were include bit byte memory word relationship between different units i have told you the equivalency of bit byte and different memory units then we have discussed memory and its classification built up wise and retention power wise i have told you that built up wise we can classify memory into three types that were chip memory magnetic memory and optical memory and retention power wise we can classify computer memory into two types volatile and non volatile memory memory so today we will study about memory classification just look at the diagram we have actually two types of computer memory main memory and secondary memory while main memory is further classified into three types ipm ram and rom internal process memory processor memory is further classified into two types of computer memory cache memory and registers and secondary memory we also call as backing storage is further classified into three types like magnetic memory optical memory and chip memory so we will discuss them one by one these are the types of computer memory here in the screen you are watching the picture of chip memory so first of all we will talk about main memory main memory is defined as the memory that is directly connected to the cpu it holds the data and instructions for processing what does it means you people have seen in your mobiles that you have to use different kinds of applications and programs and you have do your applications and programs are usually run on ram which we call it main memory it means that main memory also called primary memory is the part of system that holds the data and instructions for processing that it is used by the system at startup to run various program it means that because computer needs or your system needs memory to store the information or data somewhere to utilize it so main memory is used to store that data that is being used by the system at startup and to run various types of program such as you can take the example of operating system and other application program as well if you look at the structure of computer memory typically it contain microchips that i have also showed you in the last figure there are microchips that are either attached or connected to the computer motherboard now we have to look at the range of computer memory computer memory can range from couple of megabytes to several gigabytes whenever user have to load any kind of software from a storage medium first it is loaded in the main memory and then executed or processed now we will look into types of main memory as in the figure we have discussed about three types ipm ram and rom internal processor memory internal processor memory is further classified into cache memory and processor registers and ram and rom are the types of main memory first of all we will look into the internal processor memory ipm is directly accessible to cpu it means cpu have the direct has the direct access of internal processor memory which we also call a cache memory or processor registers these are the example of cache memory their speed is extremely fast you have also read the first mcqs of chapter number 1 in class 9 that which is the fastest 
memory we call it cache memory in ninth we have also studied about this as cache memory is the small amount of high speed semiconductor memory it's, it it exists inside the microprocessor or on the motherboard of computer you have seen that there are chips installed on motherboard so cache memory is also exist inside inside the microprocessor or it is also exist on the motherboard it lies between main memory and processor what does it mean it means that when the processor required any information first it will look into the cache memory and if it is not available in cache memory then it will fetch it from the main memory so cache memory is lie, lying between main memory and processor if the data required to the mother to the processor if data is required so first it will look up into cache memory if it is not available in cache memory then it will fetch that data from main memory so i hope the last point is clear because it shows that it lies between main memory and processor it means that if the data is present in the cache memory processor will access it from cache otherwise it will look into the main memory that we also call ram i will show you the diagram okay cache memory has three levels l1 l2 and l3 look at the diagram carefully the microprocessor l1 cache exist inside the microprocessor so it means that it chip it has the chips that are inside the microprocessor and if microprocessor needs to access some data from l1 cache so it it required very low amount of time that is fastest access time will be there in level 1 which we call l1 cache second is l2 and l3 cache so l2 and l3 mean level 2 and level 3 they are separate chips on the motherboard look at the diagram it is clear from the figure that l2 and l3 are the separate chips on the motherboard now and on the third number we have the main memory so let me repeat it because if l1 look at the l1 l1 is the cache memory that is built inside the microprocessor chip it has the fastest access time l2 and 3 are separate chips on motherboard these can be accessed more quickly than the main memory but not than l1 cache because l1 is inside microprocessor so fastest access time in l1 second fastest in l2 and l3 and the third fastest access time in to to if you have to access the data from main memory or ram but so it is clear from the figure that cache memory can be accessed more quicker than main memory how we will discuss about the second type of cache memory second type of internal processor memory is processor register these are small memory units there are large number of register inside the processor and what is their function their function is to store temporarily data or to pass that temporarily bind information to other part of processor or main memory when you have to execute different kinds of program you have to store data store bind information or you have to pass it to other part of processor so normally it is done by processor register there are further types of processor register which are commonly used our accumulator instruction register which we call it ir dr data registers program counter registers we call it pcs and memory address register these are some commonly used register inside the microprocessor now we will discuss about the third type that is ram these are the types of main memory first we have discussed about internal processor memory which include cache memory and registers secondly we will we are discussing about ram random access memory 
Random access memory is used with semiconductor memories. We take it usually to mean read and write memory. We call it read and write memory because we have to read the data from that memory and we have to write the data on this memory. It is used in the computer for the storage of active programs and data. Like you have seen the example in your mobiles that if there is some application program is running, some app is running on your mobiles, it is usually stored in RAM. Once you look into your RAM details, it is clear from there that it holds the data. It has the memory occupied by the program used by the RAM. So the content of RAM changes continuously as execution of program because once you are executing a new program, it will also stored in RAM. So content changes when you close the first program and you clear it from the applications. So it is removed from the RAM and next program is loaded into random access memory. Now you have to look at the fourth point that it processing speed depends on RAM. You, your computer speed also depends, your mobile speed also depends on RAM. Mobile is also a type of computer. So that's why I'm giving the example of RAM that its processing speed is dependent on RAM. If you have high amount of RAM, your processing power will be higher. So large RAM size provide larger amount of information to a computer for processing and hence increase the processing speed. Like you have to buy the mobile, what you are looking, what you look at the factor, you are asking from the customer uh, shopkeeper that it should have three GB it should have 4 GB of RAM and 64 GB of ROM or 32 GB of ROM. It means that you need more processing speed. So now in normal cases, once you need more processing speed, you buy the system or computer or mobile, which has large amount of RAM. So now let me tell you the disadvantage of RAM. Once you switch off your mobile, your data will be lost. So we call it volatile it is a volatile memory it is the biggest disadvantage of ram volatile mean it will lose all stored information if power is turned off so now we will discuss about different types of ram ram have two different types we call it dram and sram first we will discuss about dram mean dynamic ram dynamic ram is the most common type of computer memory computer main memory we call it ram each dynamic ram chip contains millions of memory cells which we call electronic switch as you know switch have two states once you look at your electric board if there is a switch it has two states on and off on and off represented by binary one and zero these memory cells are made up of transistor and capacitor so each cell store one bit of information as I have told you in the beginning that it has millions of memory cells. So millions of bits can be stored in dynamic RAM. These memory cells are made up of transistors and capacitor. So small amount of power is required to store one bit of information. So it will leak energy quickly. So if you want to stop that leaking of energy, you have to require, you are supposed to recharge it many times per second. TPS mean times per second. So energy leaks out quickly. So recharging is required many times per second. It means that computer must recharge all the cell in the memory chips many times per second. What will be going to the next? Otherwise, the information will be lost. So we need to store the information once we are using the cell. So recharging is required continuously and it is also used in computer as a temporary memory. So this is the explanation of DRAM. Now we will discuss about second type of RAM is static RAM. Static RAM, we also call it SRAM. SRAM is the most common type of RAM that is used in computer. It also have millions of memory cells we call electronic switch. Each dynamic, sorry, 
each memory cell of static RAM is like an electronic switch. It also have two switch as I have told you zeros and one means on and off. But it doesn't need to be recharged. It works in a different way from dynamic RAM. What then what is the difference between SRAM and DRAM? There's a difference that it requires more transistor than DRAM it, because it works differently from dynamic RAM. So it needs more transistor than dynamic RAM. So if it has more transistor, it means it will have more speed. It will have higher speed. It will faster than DRAM. But the disadvantage is that once you have to install more transistors, so it will be more expensive than dynamic RAM. It is faster than SRAM, but more expensive than Sorry, it is faster than DRAM and expensive than DRAM. So it is also used as a cache memory in computer. This was the explanation of SRAM. Second type is ROM. ROM mean read only memory. We will discuss read only memory. This process of entering data in ROM is called programming the ROM. I'm telling you the definition of ROM, read-only memory. ROMs cannot have their data change once they have been programmed. It means you have to program the data into ROM that is read-only memory. While in RAM, you can easily erase the data. <clears throat> but in ROM, what you have to, what is the factor? In ROMs, you cannot have their data change once they have been programmed. Because other can be erased and programmed as often required by manufacturer. Yes, manufacturer can change and program the data. So it is not writing the data. It is actually programming the data in ROM where it is used. They are used to store programs that are frequently required and are not to change during the operation of computer. It is a non-volatile memory as you have seen that once you switch off the light, once you switch off the power, no data is being lost. No program is being lost from the RAM. So it is a non-volatile memory. It is different from RAM. Types of ROM are PROM. PROM mean programmable read-only memory. It is also a semiconductor chip. But chip please keep in mind that once we are talking about ROM, ROM will have semiconductor chips. As in the figure I have shown you the main memory and ROM figures that they have electronic cells, they have chips that is obtained from a manufacturer in an unprogrammed state. Once you have to buy it unprogrammed state, you have to program it using your own desired instructions. User program, I have only 10 minutes, sorry, of meeting. So let me try to end it on time. Okay, <clears throat> I've, I'm telling you about programmable read-only memory. Programmable read-only PROM, user have to buy it from a manufacturer once it doesn't have any program state. We call it unprogrammed state. And user have to program it according to his own requirement, but it can be programmed only once. PROM is used in electronic machine that requires some information to be stored it permanently because like look at the example of washing machine in washing machine you have to program it once once you store the data so secondly you do not have to change it so programmable read-only memory can be utilized over there second type is EPROM EPROM mean EPROM mean erasable programmable read-only memory this type of ROM can have its content erased by ultraviolet light using special circuitry outside the computer and then it is to be reprogrammed. This procedure can be carried out many times. So it is better than PR, PROM because you can erase the data using some techniques yani ultraviolet light ke zariye aap se data ko remove karke dobara reprogram kar sakte hain. However, the constant erasing and rewriting will eventually make the chip useless. It means that you do not have to do the steps again and again, even it is a erasable memory, but it doesn't mean that you are supposed to change it continuously. 
so ep roms are generally used for programs designed for repeated use such as basic input outputs bios but that can be upgraded with a later version of program you have to change your bios information you have to write it again and again so for this purpose erasable programmable read only memory is used and the last type is electronically electrically erasable programmable read only memory we call it double ep rom it is also being used for rom applications because it can be altered while being used in a logic board by using special power circuit and you can write pulse generator double ep rom can work like a read write semiconductor memory while retaining the non volatile nature non volatile nature mean still if you lost if its power is lost it will not erase the data still it is electrically erasable memory but it will maintain its non volatile nature because it is a read only memory and we call it non volatile so this type of rom works in a similar way to flash memory like usb look at the example of usb once you have to write the data in usb it will be erased while you erase it by inserting this you flash drive or usb into computer and deleting the data or utilizing the data that is required to utilize or delete it so it is same like flash drives it is also used to store computer system bios and can be updated without removing it from the circuit board so you do not need to remove it from circuit board and then Uh, program it again you can use this while it is connected on the circuit board so this was the end of today's topic today let me repeat the key points we have discussed about main memory and rom main memory ram and rom we have i have told you about internal processor memory cache memory register memory i have told you about in cache memory has three levels l1 l2 and l3 i have told you about registers and their specific types then i have explained random access memory and its types sram and dram i have told you the difference between sram and dram was the difference between sram and dram was of use of many transistors in sram while use of Uh, and sram requires doesn't requires any kind of recharging while dram requires charging that was the major difference between dram and sram then i have explained the types of read only memory we call it rom i have told you about programming how to program the rom and i have told you about uses of rom and furtherly i have told you about types of read only memory these includes p rom ep rom and double ep rom this was the end of today's topic if there is any question any query comment box is open you can ask any kind of question in the comment section and you can also ask the question right now thank you so much thank you for patient listening